Yo, what is going on, everybody? Zek is here coming at you with an Arms Warrior Vanilla PvP guide. Now, I'm trying to make this guide as short and sweet as possible. First off, we're going to cover talents. Now, there's several different ways you can uh, go with a Mortal Strike talent arms build, but I'm just going to show you the basic one that I do. Got to put two points in deflection, three points into improved ren because you need uh, deep wounds and impale. You're going to put five points in attack tropical mastery for stance dancing. 2 points in improved overpower, 3 points in deep wounds, 2 in impale, 5 in two-handed weapon specialization. Now, this is where it depends on what weapon you're using. There's axe, polearm, mace, and sword specialization. Sword specialization is my personal favorite, and I'm pretty sure one of the best in the game. Uh, axe is crit, and mace is 6% uh, stun chance for 3 seconds. Uh, and then sword spec is just like if you guys know what the trinket is hand of justice is um basically it, it uh gives you an extra auto attack so really really good for pvp so put one into sweeping strikes five and in, into sword specialization if you have like ash candy or a sword or something um yeah now this is where you can customize it. You could put points in improved hamstring, you could put anger management, you could put more into parry. Uh, I just personally put two in improved hamstring and then mortal strike. Then from there we're gonna go on to the fury tree. Five into cruelty, five into booming voice. You do not need a spec into unbridled wrath for arms. You have a two hander, one extra rage is is pointless, and you need booming voice benefits you more. Then this is also customizable. I like to put one in piercing howl, three in blood craze, and one in improved battle shout. You could put one in uh, improved cleave and none in, in blood craze. Put them all into battle shout, uh, whatever you want. But I personally like blood craze for a little bit more survivability, and uh, improved battle shout for uh, improved battle shout. Then the rest of the points into enrage. So this is what your talent tree should look like. You've got improved hamstring, sword specialization if you have a sword. Uh, blood craze, enrage, cruelty, booming voice, etc., etc. All right, so that's the talents uh, for Arms Warrior with the two-handed sword. Now we're going to get on to gameplay a little bit. So I'm on my warrior here, and the uh, first thing you're going to do is when you see a target, you're going to try and get a charge off. From there, you're going to want to hamstring the charge, the target, or you're going to want to piercing howl the target. Now the reason for this is because Pretty much any class is going to immediately try and run away from you. They're going to be like, oh, it's a warrior. He's geared. I want to run away. So you need to get that hamstring up in order to slow them. Then once you get that hamstring up, then you can start switching into berserker stance. Uh, maybe pop an enrage. Maybe pop a, a, a blood rage to get enough rage for a mortal strike. Uh, and then just go ham with your normal rotation. But yeah, I'm not going to really explain too much about how to 1v1 each class, but those are just the basic talents, uh, and the basic thing you want to do is just charge in, hamstring, or piercing howl, and then mortal strike right away. Unless there's some sort of situation where you need a fear, or pop a sweeping strikes, or stuff like that. Now I'll go over gear. As Arms Warrior in PvP, you need 5% hit. So this is 5% from any piece of gear. So I have one from the bracers, got one from the bow, two from the rings, that's a total of four, and then I've got one from chromatic boots or uh, one from gauntlets of might. So you need that 5%. Now the 5% isn't for auto attack, this is for yellow damage. So you can still miss your auto attacks, but you'll never miss a mortal strike, you'll never miss an overpower if you have 5% hit. You can run with 4% and you could take a risk with missing sometimes if you want to run, you know, stronghold gauntlets or something. Um, but I recommend that you have 5%. Uh, it's That's the thing you should shoot for right off the bat. Even if you have to sacrifice your Helm of Endless Rage for a Lionheart or something along those lines. Or even if you have to put on True Strike just to get the, that extra 2%. Uh, it's definitely worth it in my opinion. So some of the weapons that you're going to want to obtain from Molten Core. First I'll start off with uh, Magmadar. Now Magmadar drops Earthshaker and OEB Obsidian Edge Blade. Now these are good weapons if you can't get your hands on anything from Ragnaros. So if you want to spec into Mace Specialization and you don't have Unstoppable Force or if you 
you know, if you're very casual and you just want, like, kind of a, a trolley weapon that stuns a lot, Earthshaker is actually not that bad. I mean, it's pretty garbage because it doesn't really have that many stats and it's got very low, uh, low top end, but, you know, it's, it's cool though. It definitely, I've definitely seen it in, in cases where it, it will stun everybody. It's like a, f it's like a free war stump, but it, instead of 1.5 seconds, it's three seconds. Uh, next we go on to OEB. Now, Obsidian Edge Blade is, is pretty good if you can't get your hands on a, a better sword. Like if you can't get your hands on a Bone Reaver's Edge or a Untamed Blade or, you know, an Ash Candy or something along those lines. The 42 strength, which is 84 attack power, it's not that bad for PvP. It's actually pretty good. Um, but the uh, increased two-handed swords plus eight is uh, it doesn't matter for PvP. Everyone you're fighting is your level, so there's going to be no glancing blows in PvP. So uh, yeah, plus it's got not that good damage per second, and it's a uh, very low high end. Now the thing that you're going to want to shoot for if you're in a guild and uh, if you have the option of being able to pick a PvP weapon or something along those lines, you really want to try and get a BRE. Bone Reaver's Edge is probably one of the best PvP swords in the game besides like a rank 14 weapon or uh, Ash Candy. People say that it's better than Ash Candy, uh, but I'll get into that later. Basically what it does is there's a chance on hit your attacks ignore 700 of your impo your enemy's armor for 10 seconds this effect stacks up to three times so if you get three stacks of bone reaver's edge you're able to ignore 2100 armor of the enemy now basically what this translates into is that a mage only has about you know let's say here i'll swap over to my mage my mage only has about uh 1600 armor so even if i get two stacks that that leaves this target with about 200 armor left and what happens when a target has zero armor is your attacks deal true damage so people say that this weapon's a lot better than ash candy because if you get an enraged proc like if you get an enraged proc and you get three stacks up ere you can literally kill someone in one hit with mortal strike uh, so yeah it, it's it's pretty good. It's definitely one of the one of the best PvP weapons in the game. Now it also has one crit, and on Elysium there isn't any stamina on it, but on uh, on other servers there is 16 stamina on this weapon, which would make it just even more godly. 160 health plus one crit plus this proc with really good top end. Um, yeah, it's it's just phenomenal. I'll move on to Spine, Spinal Reaper. Uh, this is another good weapon. Basically, when what happens is when you kill a target, it grants you 20 rage, also 34 attack power. Uh, yeah, so if you run up to a target and execute them, you'll get 20 rage, allowing you to uh, battle shout or allowing you to, you know, switch stances and intercept another target, or even allowing you to just get up a, a sweeping strikes. Um, really good with axe specialization. Definitely not a bad weapon. So if you if you were to get come out of molten core, you'd come out with Bone Reaver's Edge or Spinal Reaper, or Spinal Reaper if you had a choice. Now I'll move on to uh, BWL really quickly. Untamed Blade. People think it's really good. I personally don't think it's that good for PvE. Or, I'm sorry, for PvP. It's good for PvE if you get the proc. Um, and if you're two-handed fury like myself. Um, but otherwise, I'd recommend a different sword. I'd even recommend one of the axes. There's uh, a few axes that drop from here. Including Maces as well. There's a Draconic Maul, it's not bad for Rep Pallies, uh, not bad for Druids either. Draconic Avenger, also pretty good. Uh, me personally, I would recommend um, Drake Town Cleaver. This weapon's really good with that with that proc and that stamina and that good top end damage. Uh, that proc can, can proc twice with Hand of Justice uh, as well. I'll get into that uh, later. But the main thing you're going to want to go for is Ash Candy. Ash Candy is just such a good sword. People think it's, uh, you know, b below BRE. I think it's above me personally. I think it's better than BRE um, just because of the stamina. 330 health from one weapon is just so much health. You won't be able to get that from any other weapon. Plus, it's got 86 attack power and really, really good top end. The only thing that's bad about it is it's a 3.5 sword. If it was a 3.8 sword, it, it would be a lot better because the uh, slower attack speed swords mean stuff procs more often. Um, but yeah, Ash Candy is just a, a phenomenal weapon, and I 
highly recommend that. If you were to go for any sword, you'd go for Ash Candy or Beery. But yeah, so that's pretty much uh, all the gear that you're going to want to go for. The last thing I want to mention are trinkets. Your trinket setup is 90% of the time is going to be this. Hand of Justice and your PvP trinket. Hand of Justice is just too good to get rid of. It basically gives you 20 attack power and the, the chance to sword spec. So if your sword specialization, you can sword spec and hand of justice all in the same attack and just completely delete someone. Really good. Now, the reason why you run a PvP trinket is for snares. You're going to be fighting a lot of mages who will frost over you. You'll also be chilled. And so if you PvP trinket, it removes all of that. And then you're able to go up to them and try and do as much damage as you can before they blink away. But yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this guide. I just covered basic stuff about gear and st stats and weapons. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.